they come right. and inspect it quarterly, four, quarterly, four times a year. 526728. It's uh, I think it's 400 and something a month, like 455 or something like that a month. And we pay it annually. Mm -hmm. and we have had a lot of times we've had to call them in this. Uh, a lot. In fact, they billed us like about six thousand dollars that they, when we called them, they went back and yeah, because we had them wrote that off so because we had every time they come, I mean, if you don't have it, it's, it's, a, it's a huge expense. But you know, we had a, had a time when it wasn't opening and it wouldn't stop on the right floors and and a lot of things. But this they did just about what we paid last year. Yeah. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Motion carried. Item number four, no payroll. Item number five is reports. copies and stuff so that's just a yearly thing that we have to do that I do and, and the basic bottom line is that um, you're saying that you found nothing to cause us to conclude that the balances and allocations were not in all material respects appropriately collected in the document so thank you yes, that's Karen's report in Paxton um, sending a chapter 59 Report to Ken Paxton. That's the uh, Chapter 59 Asset Forfeiture Report. <coughs> we uh, have a copy of that. And we have a report from Constable Precinct 2 on uh, February monthly activity, including the river water to the Gummy area during the ice and snowstorm. Anyone else have a report? We do not. Do we have a motion to accept the report? Motion in the second. All in favor, aye. Motion carried. 
506 is a burn ban. We do not have one in place. If there's no action, then we will go to I-107 special road use agreements. Contracts, permits, or bonds, are there any? If not, we'll go to I-108 to approve bonds and education certificates. We do have one for Linda Jarvis for the County and District Clerks Association. 20 hours continuing education. Do we have any others? I have a motion. Second. To accept that. The motion to accept that education certificate. Number nine is to approve the purchase of Skidster, which we have already done. But in connection with that, we need to approve the resolution for the Government Capital Corporation for the purpose of financing. And um, we do have the resolution, which are, it's basically the same that we've done before for, um, for financing that we can use through this um, Government Capital Corporation. And it does comply with, with the requirements of the law to be able to use it in that manner. It's a qualified tax exempt obligation for purposes of section 265B3 of the Internal Revenue Code. We have a motion to approve the resolution. I'll make the motion. I'll second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Motion carried. Excuse me, where is it? In the barn. What barn? He in it? He's in the barn. <laughs> training on the environmental so he's ready to roll on that um, matter of fact he's already got a list of stuff to to start doing when we release him from our training um, the only other thing I wanted to mention to the court regarding Jason is the fact that the EMC duties uh, which I'm still going to tell you we need a full-time EMC plain and simple I don't think we do the county any justice or the citizens that work here or live here any justice by not having a full-time EMC we can't see that in the last year. Something's wrong. <laughs> so, um, but he has no experience, no training whatsoever on EMC work. So this is going to be a, a lengthy deal because there's 19 training courses he has to have for EMC. And eight of those he can get online. And 11 of those have to be in a classroom. So, um, so we're going to be a work in progress on that part. And we'll get it. Um, I'm going to help him out and do whatever we need to do. And some of these trainings, I'm sure I'll go to um, myself just because it'll benefit me as well, um, especially if I'm supervising him. Um, so just wanted to introduce him to the court, let you know kind of what we're dealing with going forward, especially with the EMC stuff. You got a phone number? That's yes. I have a question. You were going to uh, keep up with how many um, illegal dumping calls that you have had. And he'll have them. 
Do you have any idea how many we've had so far? Right now, yes, ma'am. Go ahead, Mr. Yes, um, we've had probably about seven so far since I've been here that they've actually referred to me. Mm -hmm. um, I've already got two felony investigations underway. Um, I got one that was in my box from last night. Um, but I'm still in training, so I'm still functioning as a deputy uh, mm -hmm. in that role. So, but yes, they, they are constantly. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Right. Um, and he should be released at the end of this week. So starting next week, he'll be out on his own. We, we, we just basically kept him with us for a few weeks just to get used to the county. He's not from this county. Mm -hmm. get, get adjusted to some of the county and our, our computer system and, and the way we do things. Uh, my county phone number is 903 388 5139. Can you your phone number? I'm sorry, sir. That is it. Can't get you there, what we call? My personal phone. Call us. The sheriff's office. Should, should we it, it, tell the citizens to call? Your dispatch, and then let them get that to him, or should they call him directly? Yes, no. yes, ma'am. Yes, dispatch. So dispatch needs to call us. That's why we wanted it under our mm -hmm. direction, so every call is noted. Um, so they need to call us, and then we'll. That's what he'll be dispatched to instead of, you know, uh, yeah. a, a deputy handling another call. He'll be dispatched to those those dumping calls. And, investigating those and turning those in. He'll work directly with the DA himself as far as filing those cases and stuff like that. And, and what number is that to the Sheriff's Department 3840? 3236. Press 1 when the prompts hit. 3236. That is the jail. 3840 is the jail. That's the number that comes up from my phone every time I call. Oh, yeah, probably. And then your name is what now? Jason McGee. M C G H E E. I think you're going to fit in real good here. Where'd you come from? What town do you leave to come here? Uh, well, so I moved here over a year and a half ago, but the the place where I was practicing law enforcement was in a little town by the name of Big Lake in West Texas in Reagan County. Is that where you're from? No, sir. I'm, I'm originally from Dallas, and now I live just, just outside of Centerville. Reagan County. I weigh 137 to go around Big Lake. That's right. I, was, I live just outside of a little town by the name of Ira Inn. Yeah, that's where Dan Seals is right in there. You know Dan Seals? We took 36 at the number. That's the one I always call and get dispatched. And that's Charlie Seals. And then just press one. Oh, yes. I wasn't thinking about that. Mm -hmm. So they'll locate the local citizen. Yes, I do know that. Who they are. Thanks. So, yep. And so, um, anyway, we'll be getting set up as the trainings. I've already been in touch with our call, hot calling, and, and they, you know, there's not very many going on right now due to COVID, but mm -hmm. since um, I'm hearing that's just a drop off, maybe they'll pick it back up. And he may be spending as much time in training as he is, as he is here trying to get going. So. And, you know, we, we have updates to the manuals and those kinds of things. We have normally done that through our office in conjunction with you because we have it all on the computer and we sure will, surely will continue to provide that service for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whatever we can do to help do. Awesome. Okay. Do we have a motion for the appointment? I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Discuss the tax abatement application for Zippy J's Brenham Holdings LLC. What happened to the line, brother? Yeah, he's the line. Um, I wrote all over it. Item number 11 approved the contract for services with Freestone County and with Freestone County and Fairfield Lines Club. We've been talking about this for a while about the Welch Allen Vision Screener um, that would be housed at the hospital and it will be available for Freestone County citizens uh, to use. I, I know they're going to be using them for various, for various schools to um, 
provide this service with the vision screener. Uh, and for our part, we agree to pay $2,110 as our part of the cost of the vision screener. The provider, which is <coughs> Fairfield Lions Club, will maintain whatever insurance, maintenance, and supplies are needed. So the only, our only contribution is the uh, one-third cost of the vision screener. And so the motion would be to enter into this contract for services with the Fairfield Lions Club. I make the motion. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? None of the motion carried. Now we'll go to 12, tax abatement application from the ZJs. <coughs> Did we each have a book on that? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, good morning, uh, Judge Commissioners. I'm here to present on that item this morning. Thank you for allowing that to be on here. Um, that notebook you have in front of you, the first page of it is the application to the County of Freestone for a tax abatement agreement for, uh, on behalf of Zippy J's Brenham Holdings, uh, which is going to build the uh, TA Express Travel Centers of America on, on I 45 up there with the Whataburger restaurant included in that. Um, first of all, I just want to tell you that today this is a discussion item only. You can, uh, no one's expecting any action. You actually can't take any action toward tax abatement. There has to be a 30-day public notice before you can do that. So this is just a, a discussion item only, and this is just to introduce you to the project and actually turn the application officially in, into you. Um, let me tell you a little bit about the, before, I'm going to tell you about the notebook in just a second, but let me just give you a general overview of the project and <clears throat> how I'm involved in everything. Um, so um, the, the owner-operator of this project is Dr. J.T. Roberts from Longview, Texas. Dr. Roberts is an optometrist in Longview. He's, a, he's from that, that town over there. Uh, he uh, is in partnership with Brenham Wholesale Grocery from Brenham, Texas. Uh, Dr. Roberts and his company, Zippy J's, owns 23 of these centers. Now, they're all different sizes. Uh, the one here in Fairfield is going to be one of the largest ones they've ever built. Uh, but he's very experienced. Uh, he, he's, he's been doing this since the 80s. Uh, very good quality projects. Uh, if you ever, when you go into Palestine on the right hand side, the gateway to the Denny's and the car wash, that's one of his, his stores over there. If you can imagine going into one at, at Palestine in there, if you've ever been in there, the one in Fairfield is kind of the same floor plan, only bigger. And of course, it's just going to be a bigger deal with a water burger with two drive through lanes, uh, 282 truck parking places in the back, 82 car uh, parking places in front, multiple pumps and everything. Um, so this will, this will be a big deal. I met Dr. Roberts well over a year ago. Uh, he came to me, and the only thing that he asked, he was considering Fairfield uh, and a couple other places. Uh, the land up there on I-45 kind of got all put together. Danny Burnett put it all together finally and, and it was available. And so he came to me and he said, uh, what I really, the only thing I'm interested in, if you would have, if you give me some help on tax abatement through the city and the county. And so we started on the city, this, this is last year. Um, and um, he didn't ask for any other incentives or anything like that. Uh, he filled out an application for the city of Fairfield back in October. The city council of Fairfield approved a 10-year tax abatement for him. Their, their guidelines and criteria are a little bit different years because they give points for sales tax. So anyway, they gave him a 10-year abatement. Uh, it was approved last October. <clears throat> and so that's how I got to know Dr. Roberts. I've been to Longview to his office. I've been to his store over there. Uh, I've, I've taken the tour and I've seen what he does. He's partnered on this with a, with a guy named Billy Havlinski from Athens. Billy owns the Whataburger in, in uh, Palestine and most of them over in East Texas. If you've ever been in one over there, Billy probably owned it. Uh, he's a real good operator for Whataburger. He has numerous restaurants and so he's got a lot of experience. They got, like I say, uh, uh, Dr. Roberts has 23 locations. Uh, 
he's going to partner. He's going to open this as a T. He's a TA for franchisee now. Travel Centers of America. I don't know if y'all are familiar, but there's four large truck stops in the United States. That's Love's, Pilot, Flying J, and TA. TA, uh, it says this in your packet, one of those tabs, TA has the accounts of 90% of the Fortune 500 companies, trucking companies in the United States. So that means those, those drivers have that, that car. And uh, so that's, that's a, they draw a, a big crowd wherever they go. There is not a TA between Dallas and Houston. There is not a water burger between Corsican and Huntsville. So um, it's two things that are not in this area that, that, that's looking to draw a pretty good crowd. So they've purchased 19 acres up there on I-45. Uh, jobs, this is one of the most important things, 40 at the Travel Plaza and 36 at the water burger. They don't typically hire part-time people. Uh, uh, the Travel Plaza, he likes to hire full-time, so does Whataburger. But the Travel Plaza, he said he'd hire a few part-time, just you know, here and there as needed, but they, they start at um, 10 to 12 an hour with no experience, and most of their people are making 13 to 15, and it's full-time jobs. So, um, the uh, facility, it's going to be $9 million. $9 million facility, going to do $100,000 in sales tax money for the city of Fairfield, uh, $841,000 payroll of, of new jobs, and they applied for their building permit in the city of Fairfield. I met with them yesterday, and they turned in everything yesterday to get the plan review done, take about 10 days, and then they'll get a building permit, and everything should be should start rolling. So, uh, you know, so, okay. Um, just tell you about this notebook. So I prepared this for you so you could look at it, review it. It does have the application, but it's got some other things to consider in there. Um, number one, the the, ta uh, the first thing is the application, and after the application, uh, on tab number one is the points scored. So you all, you're familiar with your tax abatement agreement. You look at that sometimes, occasionally, but um, so when you when you look at what jobs, capital investment, annual payroll that he has, he scored 203 points. And if you take that 203 points and go back to the back of the book and look at your Freestone County tax abatement criteria, he, he scored uh, well enough to get a five-year tax abatement, 100% for the first two years. Um, and I believe it's 70-50 um, and 20. Yeah, 70, 50, and 20. So that's how he scores right now with the size of the project he has. Uh, beyond the next tab there, if you'll notice, is um, this is pretty important too. This is from the Freestone Central Appraisal District. Bud Black prepared this for me. And what this shows you is that the value of the land right now with nothing on it, there's nothing up there. It's valued at, it's on the tax rolls for $708,378. Okay. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind is if you give anybody tax abatement, they take a snapshot of the value right now, and you're going to get taxes <coughs> on that amount through the entire period of the abatement. So you don't lose any money. You're just abating the, the, the improvement that he's going to put on there. Okay. So right now, if you if you um, you actually uh, go to the next tab, no, it's not. It's right behind. It's right behind the. Uh, the valuation um, right now at seven hundred eight thousand three hundred seventy eight dollar valuation, Freestone County is getting is going to get two thousand eight hundred and ninety seven dollars and twenty seven cents a year. That's all you're making on taxes right now off off that property off nineteen acres on I forty five right now. Now that's going to change when he builds a nine million dollar facility on there because it's going to get reappraised and when a, when a maintenance over with then you can flip the page and you can see that on $9 million, you're going to get $36,810 a year. So it's a real good, if you want him to build $9 million, you actually would hope he build a $90 million facility because the more he builds, the more taxes it generates. Uh, so you're looking at, you're going to go from, no matter what, you're going to go from $28.97 a year up to $36,810 is what you're looking at. Based on what he's saying, he's gonna he's gonna build. So uh, you flip the go to the next tab. There's a, there's a section on it's, it's press releases. It talks about the travel centers of America's growth, 
uh, and I've highlighted a few things on there. And the last part of the press release is where the city of Fairfield released that they did approve a tax abatement for uh, Zippy J. <clears throat> now, you may notice that in the, the press release for Fairfield, it says he's going to build a um, $6 million facility. Well, he was, and now it's going to be a $9 million facility. So at the time of their, uh, at their application there, it was $6 million. Now it's gone up to nine. So. And there is a possibility that we could get a TA truck shop later on on the property. Um, we're, he's talking with TA about that. If he gets the TA truck shop, it's going to create 20 more jobs at the truck shop. So I will tell you, he's looking for an operator of the truck shop. If anybody has any leads and knows somebody that, that that's kind of their thing, they could get set up real quick on this. Because uh, he doesn't want to run the truck shop. He wants somebody else to do that. So. We're trying to help him in that regard too. If you flip the over to the next tab, uh, this is a impact report. We we for, through the Fairfield EDC, I don't do any type of incentive proposal unless I run it through uh, Impact Data Source, where we plug the numbers in, where we can tell you and, and ourselves, you know, what is the impact if we if you were to do this deal. First page there. This is a 10-year impact, 10-year study. Um, if you were to to approve the proposed tax abatement in the future that he's requested, um, the net benefits are $261,547 over a 10-year period. So you're, you're, you're gaining out of that. Uh, you're, you're not losing anything. If you flip the page, the combined net benefit for the City of Fairfield, Freestone County, Fairfield ISD is a total of $2,923,117 over 10 years. Uh, Obviously, the school district gets a lot of benefit out of this more than more than anybody because of their tax rate. And then the last tab, very end of the book, is your tax abatement guidelines and criteria that's in effect through uh, February 27th. It has expired. I'd recommend the next meeting that, that you approve the same abatement agreement and you just update it. It's only good for two years at a time. So I think I helped y'all update the last time. So, Anyway, that, that's the notebook, that's the, that's the tabs, uh, that's the project, um, so, and I'll be glad to answer any questions you might have. I will tell you that the path forward would, would be that, and what Dr. Roberts would request, that you consider the tax abatement application and, and, of course, grant that. If you were to do that, we, we just have to make a public notice for 30 days, and, and it, you can't do it. Uh, no sooner than 30 days from today, which could be the, the first regular meeting in April. Um, and there's a, there's a notice to put out. There's a couple of uh, a resolution you have to do. Um, I can help you all with that. There's no problem. Uh, Dr. Roberts would be more than happy to come next month and actually come here and meet you and talk to you about his project and answer any questions you might have. He came to the city council meeting and did the same thing. Uh, I think he's a good community partner. I think he'll he would do well for the county and the city, and uh, uh, he'd be glad to come and, and talk to you all. So uh, I'll just uh, I think I'll end on that note. Any questions, comments from anybody? Thank you. All right. We do need to get together and look at that and see if there's anything we need to update so we can have it on the next. Sure. Sure. The, um, agreement that we have. See so if we need to, what we need to update. Okay. Right. This will be about that. I did give a notebook, the same notebook you have. I already gave one to Brian Evans, gave it to him last week. I had a meeting with him and, and left one for him, so he has a copy of everything you've got. So anybody has any questions, just, just Andy, please did let you me know. have a question? I said thank you. I appreciate your time and consideration. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item 13, consider a service agreement from CIRA for web hosting and web maintenance. This is for the county website. Um, I think a lot of the other, a lot of the um, elected officials do have information on there and the commission certainly can put whatever they would like to on the website. And also it's posting our um, emails and the, um, the total expense for that is $1,525 for the year. And we are entering into this service agreement with them, which we've had for quite a number of years. 
there a motion? No, I'm Second. Motion and a second to enter into the service agreement with Cyril. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed, none. Motion carried. Item number 14 is to accept the racial profiling report for Constable Precinct 1 for this last year. And on this um, exemption, full exemption from the racial profiling report for Constable Precinct 1, it says, I certify it's not the policy of this agency to make traffic stops in the routine performance of the officer's official duties. Do we have a motion to accept this report? You can do an exemption if you certify that that's not one of the things you normally do. Otherwise, you have to give a report of how many and the, the breakdown of the uh, demographics of it. Okay. Do we, did we have a motion? And second, all in favor, aye. Uh, Motion carried. Item number 15 is to consider awarding bids for the 2003 Mack Truck Twin Screw Screw Seal bids for Precinct 2. Um, yeah. Three. Yeah. Three. From Don Kent, 7851, $7,851. dollars um, Russell Parrish for $6,500. <coughs> $6,500. true or not on the individual claims? Mm -hmm. like it had to meet a certain <laughs> amount of money before they would even I, I don't know if that was true or not I can go back and look I just didn't know if you knew that now, I don't know about individuals okay. I don't know that there is there's nothing on the information that I've seen that says there's a, a minimum on individuals could be but I have not heard it on individuals and then the county of course would file um, in a different way for county expenses. Anything else? If not, do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion. 